Okay, what is going on CypherX advanced YouTubers? Welcome back to the CypherX YouTube page. As always, if you're interested in learning about cryptocurrencies, commodities, indices, foreign exchange, please go ahead and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. In today's video breakdown, we are gonna be talking about banking institutions in England, HSBC, Barclays, and their integration and involvement with Ripple and XRP. Really do appreciate the love and the support that everybody shows this page. We upgraded the banner on the CypherX YouTube set. We did update the banner on the Twitter and as well as the YouTube page mainly because we had the old instagram on the youtube banner now remember we do not have an instagram anymore so anybody impersonating cyper x make sure that you block and ban them there are impersonators out there we do not have a whatsapp we do not have a telegram all we have is a private discord channel and the only way to access that channel is if you enroll in the cyper x course material by paying the course fee to enroll in the cyper x mentoring program so without further ado let's get started in today's video breakdown before we jump into all the research surrounding ripple and xrp I just want to avert your attention over here to an article from the Daily Huddle. Top crypto analyst gives three massive price prediction targets for BTC in the year 2030, 2030, okay? Again, a long-term perspective on the cryptocurrency markets everybody that is involving themselves now should have, mainly because cryptocurrency adoption time and time again is being compared to the internet boom and bust cycle. Here, the key takeaway from this article is the adoption of Bitcoin is faster than that of the internet and that of the mobile phone right now. Therefore, due to mid Kulf's law. I don't know how to say that properly. Uh, this is completely believable. All right. And then I want to take your attention over here to this article. The internet and cryptocurrency adoption rate will reach 1 billion users by 2027. That is massive. We're talking about banking institutions. We're talking about mainstream adoption. We're talking about e-commerce. Okay. This is extremely possible considering the fact that Bitcoin and all of these altcoins hit all-time highs surrounding 200 million users, which is where we are currently at right now, 1 billion users is going to skyrocket the prices of the cryptocurrency assets that have utility and proper use case. Again, making sure that you really truly understand how early you are into this market, okay? So with that being said, let's go over here to this list of the biggest banks in the UK. We have HSB at the number one spot, Barclays, Lloyds Bank Group, and NatWest Group. Now, I don't know you know, how many assets in holding these banks and institutions have, but this is just a list that Google provided me. So I utilized this as my catalyst for some of the research that I did today. So we're first going to start off with HSBC Bank, some stuff that I love that this bank put out. I think that it's highly hilarious. We can see here this article, HSBC CEO says no plans for cryptocurrency trading desks as digital coins are volatile and lack transparency. Again, we see that banks and institutions are kind of skeptical because there is no regulatory clarity. But then I want to take your attention over here to this article from 2022. HSBC enters the metaverse through partnership with the Sandbox. So we see them getting involved in the crypto space. Sandbox, right, buying digital land with almost $3 trillion in assets is the first global bank to enter the Sandbox metaverse, the blockchain gaming firm said on Wednesday. So I find that hilarious. They went from saying that they're not going to get involved in the crypto space to involving themselves heavily in the crypto space, mainly because why? They see the adoption picking up. And when this first article came out, right, people were a lot more skeptical in the cryptocurrency space. Now that there's regulatory framework being put in place, things are being more mainstream adopted and talked about on the internet and amongst the general public, right? Big banking institutions are starting to ease their way into these distributed ledger technologies and the blockchain infrastructure okay so i just want to take your attention to the, this pdf now i thought that this pdf was very interesting because it mentions xrp it doesn't mention anything else except bitcoin and xrp and who is this from this is from hsbc this is a pdf on distributed ledger technology in the capital market so i want to avert your attention all the way down to page 13 and i have just one paragraph highlighted for you guys and i want you to pay attention to the time frame looking further ahead we expect distributed ledger technology to achieve adoption at a scale in the capital markets within five Five years and to be running alongside and even replacing core market infrastructure within 10. For now, a theoretical scenario of total decentralized global markets is hard to foresee. So we see them giving a forecast on when this adoption is going to pick up, but we see them in 2021 talking about them not getting involved in cryptocurrency. Don't you think that's questionable, right? So then I want to take your attention up here to a part of this PDF where they mention XRP. Okay, and this is going to be found on page seven, and we can see here, even more ambitiously, mutually operated ledgers could transform clearing settlement. And here, let me uh, let me zoom in for you guys right here. Okay, 
This is on page 7 of this PDF by HSBC. Even more ambitiously, mutually operated ledgers could transform clearing settlement and reporting for OTC securities and derivatives markets. That is the aim of Corda, an adaptable DLT platform created by the R3 consortium of which HSBC was an early member. And we see them mention R3 and Corda, which we know Ripple is correlated with them, as well as transforming operational efficiency such as Ledger would release huge amounts of capital by reducing settlement periods and giving users a single view of the location and, eligib and eligibility of collateral assets. Moving over here where, we, where it mentions payments. Payments, distributed ledger technology, DLT can streamline end-to-end -end value transfers, reducing cost, operational risks, and settlement periods. For example, Ripple's XRP ledger provides a real-time cross-border settlements using tokens that represent central bank currencies. In foreign exchange, HSBC's FX Everywhere tool processed more than 3 million intercompany FX transactions worth $250 billion in its first year. So we see them mention Ripple and XRP, yet we also see them mention that they have no plans of interacting with cryptocurrency assets. Hmm, okay, questionable how they have an entire PDF on it. Now they did mention R3 and Corda, we see R3 launches universal settler application facilitating global payments in Corda, XRP, the first settlement mechanism. R3 launches universal settler application to facilitate global payments on Corda, XRP, the first settlement mechanism. Corda settler built to ensure seamless settlement payments on Corda across any payment scheme. And we see that HSBC mentioning XRP was an early member of the R3 quarter consortium, okay? So isn't that interesting? Again, correlating the two. The deployment of the quarter settler and its support for XRP is the first settlement mechanism as an important step in showing how powerful ecosystems cultivated by two of the world's most influential crypto and blockchain communities can work together. When a payment obligation arises on a quarter during the course of business, one party now has the option to request settlement using XRP. So again, I find the correlation between all of these three things, HSBC, R3 corridor, and XRP, very interesting to say the least, but you guys can kind of piece the works together. Again, they're not going to tell the general public that this is happening. They're going to weed out little breadcrumbs and you're going to have to piece this stuff together bit by bit. And that is, again, what I'm attempting to do here for you all on this cryptocurrency page via my technical analysis and the deep research that I can display to you guys on YouTube without getting monetized. Okay, going back to that list of banking institutions we see underneath HSBC, we see them mention Barclays, okay? So we go over here and we see an article, Ripple Barclays Accelerator back 1.7 million round for Ripmanent's firm. Okay, coming down here, some key takeaways. Ripple Barclays Tech Accelerator and other investors have backed a 1.7 million round for SendFriend, a new Ripmanent startup that will use XRP cryptocurrency to move funds internationally. XRP is used as a liquidity vehicle for cross-border payments payments, enabling SendFriend to circumvent the corresponding banking system to convert USD XRP to Philippine peso in a matter of seconds. Ripple confirmed that the SendFriend will leverage the XRP token and release. In a release last week, Layton said at the time, the existing correspondent banking system is slow, inefficient, and costly. Its funding announcement, SendFriend, claimed that it will offer 65% lower fees compared to industry average for international transfers as blockchain replaces the friction and fees of the banking system. Okay. And then we come over here to the Ripple website and what did they announce? SendFriend uses on-demand liquidity to save customers up to 80% remnants fees. You guys can go through, click and watch this video. It's very informative. I highly suggest doing a research on XRP and Ripple and how big this is going to be for the banking system. Okay. Now, coming over here, we see another article from BarclaysCorporate.com. This is a PDF that they released. Just going through and reading it, it's filled with a lot of fluff, but it says blockchain, what is it and how will it impact your business? Scrolling down here, they mention XRP only one significant time. And when it happens to be when they're explaining how attributes that make the blockchain a big deal. Look at this right here, Ripple and XRP Network. They're mentioning it right here on the BarclaysCorporate.com website okay if you guys can't see let me zoom in for you here's xrp and ripple mentioned right here where they're using barclays as the banking institution and they're sending the transaction from it looks like euro to the aussie dollar from barclays to bank b utilizing ripple and xrp in their diagram right here now scrolling down here another interesting part of this page to end this video is down at the bottom on page seven, it says, who are the major players that I should be aware of and track? There is a large universe of Bitcoin and blockchain firms and consortia, but for ease, we suggest tracking these companies, okay? So this is again from barclayscorporate.com, which is a major banking institution in the United Kingdom. And we see them mention the UK government, 
Ethereum, R3 consortium of UK banks, Quarters R3s, Digital Asset Holdings, Hyperledger Project, Circle Internet Financial, and SETL, an institutional payment and settlement initiative with blockchain infrastructure. Now, I thought that the way that they ended this was very interesting utilizing SETL. So I went over here to this article, and this is where we put the icing on the cake. SETL hires a Ripple Global Head of Banking to lead payments business. Our chief engineer, Anthony Gulligan, in conversation with Robin Amlet, editor of IBS podcast, Margin Dilatine, joins SETL as head of payments, brings strong domain focus to help payments industry address common challenges. London, 25th, February 2021. SETL, the London-based settlement and payments infrastructure provider today, announced the appointment of Margin Dilatine to SETL's executive management team. As head of payments, Margin has overall responsibility of growing SETL's payments business alongside its market infrastructure and asset management offerings. Margin joins SETL, having most recently served as global head of banking at Ripple. She brings with her a wealth of experience, having previously held senior business development roles at Swift. Guys, I'm telling you, <laughs> pick up the breadcrumbs and piece it all together. This is not a joke, and people really don't understand how big Ripple and XRP is becoming. It has become a laughing stock and very unbelievable because of videos that I put out like the previous one where we can see influential people on Twitter and YouTube making XRP a joke by putting out unrealistic bullish expectations in the now. These bullish expectations could very well come into fruition, but not now, in the future. And that is what is the most important takeaway from these video breakdowns, okay? To finish this off, where she was responsible for the commercialization of large-scale projects, both in securities and payments, namely Target 2 Securities and SWIFT. Now, we've been and have gone over both of these infrastructures right here, Target 2, which is the euro system that the uh, euro uses, Target 2, and Securities and SWIFT, right? So we've covered both of those on this page before. Guys, piece things together for yourselves. This was just a couple of gems that I thought that I'd drop you all with to start the week off, doing some research on Ripple and XRP, showing you guys that the institutional adoption, the mainstream adoption, the e-commerce adoption, right? It's coming, okay? 1 billion users by 2027. I've predicted a market cap of anywhere between 20 to 30 to 50 trillion by 2027 to 2030, okay? This is going to be one of the biggest things that is going to happen in our lifetimes. And you as a trader, okay, need to decide who you're listening to, who you're who you're being influenced by, okay? Again, remember that these markets are very manipulative in nature. Before the internet, they were they were very manipulative in nature. And now you have all these influencers with thousands of followers. You guys see a page like ours, right, where we barely have, you know, 10,000 YouTube subscribers, okay? And a lot of people won't watch our channel because of the following count. But you see how a small channel like ours is giving out valuable information via technical analysis and research compared to these bullish influencers that are just constantly showing you guys Fibonacci retracement targets and telling you guys that the crypto market is going up. Don't follow that jargon. Don't follow that crap. Do your personal research. Remember, nothing that I constitute here is financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell XRP personally. I know what me and the CyberX students are doing. Utilizing XRP, trading XRP, leveraging XRP. Blessings to you guys all. We really do appreciate the love and the support. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel before you leave. We are almost at 6K YouTube subs. Have an amazing and outstanding week. Happy Memorial Day. Blessings to all the veterans out there. Thank you for your service. Really do appreciate it. I myself am a veteran as well. So thank you for anybody that does send those wishes out to me. Thank you for your support. As always, guys and gals, be cognizant. Please be aware. And I will see you guys in the next video breakdown.